Winter driving conditions are some of the most challenging conditions a driver will experience. The leading cause of death during a winter storm is transportation related accidents. Our winter driving safe driving program was developed to arm drivers with the knowledge to safely navigate adverse weather conditions as they arise. In this course, we'll examine adverse weather recognition, forethought and preparation, adaptation to conditions, and making safe driving decisions. Let's talk about four key strategies and steps for winter weather driving. It's essential to plan ahead and be prepared. Those keys include preparing yourself for winter driving, preparing your vehicle for winter conditions, preparing for emergencies such as medical breakdowns, collisions, and more, and prepare for other drivers who are not prepared for winter road conditions. Step one is to prepare yourself for winter driving. Allow yourself some extra time to reach your destination. Be aware of the latest road conditions before leaving and always check the weather status throughout the day. Make sure and have alternate routes planned in case of unexpected road closures. Dress warmly by wearing layers of light, loose-fitting clothes. Bring along water, snacks, warm blankets, sleeping bag, extra clothing, and a first aid kit. Make sure your cell phone or CB radio is in working order and the batteries are charged. Always check all fluid levels, battery connections, and defroster system before leaving on your trip and throughout the day. Step two is to prepare your vehicle for winter conditions. Always prepare a detailed pre-trip inspection and be very familiar and understand the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Regulations. It's imperative to the driver's safety that a thorough pre-trip inspection be complete during inclement weather and post-trip documented at the end of the trip. Performing a pre-trip inspection is also a requirement of the FMCSA and should never be overlooked. Included in the pre-trip inspection is to make sure the following are serviced and in working order. Brakes, steering, lighting, tires are inflated to the recommended pressure and checked daily, horn, windshield wipers, rear vision mirror, coupling devices, and fluid levels of antifreeze, washer fluid, and oil. It's recommended to not set trailer brakes. Instead, use chocks. The brakes can freeze. Make sure and do a brake check forward and backward to ensure that they're not frozen up. Step three is to prepare for emergencies. Know what to do if you're involved in a vehicle breakdown. Don't panic. Remember, common sense is critical to survival. Pull off as far from the road as possible. Your greatest danger at this point is being hit by a passing vehicle. Know your limitations. Don't overexert yourself, especially when shoveling snow. Physical activity may be more strenuous than your body can tolerate. Alert road assist, your fleet manager, and security if necessary. Become an expert at what you do if you're involved in a vehicle collision. Don't panic. Remember, common sense is critical. But if necessary, you can press the panic button on the dash. Ensure that you and the other people involved are not injured. As soon as reasonably possible, call your fleet manager, safety department, and security if necessary. If you're unable to call the police, we'll do that for you. Make sure and follow the accident packet checklist located in your permit book. Step four is to prepare for other drivers. You must be conscious that visibility is often compromised in winter weather conditions. Be especially careful when approaching curves, intersections, hills, and bridges. Traction is critical for maintaining control of your vehicle. Increase braking distance and allow for plenty of space between you and other vehicles. Look far ahead for potential drivers, animals, and hazards. Keep your eyes scanning in front of you and from side to side. Identify an escape by allowing enough space to stop and possibly swerve. Make sure other motorists can see you. Extreme driving conditions test even the most experienced drivers. Your speed should be adjusted for any changing conditions you encounter. Special attention should be given when there's a loss of either traction or visibility. In those cases, your speed needs to be reduced. Remember, these are general guidelines. Exact speeds will vary with conditions. The following are factors in deciding what is a safe speed. 
weight of the vehicle, type of vehicle, condition of tires, type of road surface, temperatures, and wet or frozen surfaces. Black ice represents one of the most dangerous scenarios in extreme driving conditions. Black ice is clear and allows you to see the road surface under the ice. This makes it very hard to identify. It usually occurs on bridges, beneath overpasses, in dips in the road where water collects, and in shaded areas on the lower sides of curved banks. Keep these winter weather driving tips in mind. As always, wear your seatbelt. Never use cruise control and or engine brakes in adverse weather conditions. Using these can cause a jackknife or start a slide. Slow down and keep watching ahead. Posted highway speed limits are for drive pavement conditions. Decelerate prior to any intersection, curve, turn, ramp, or upcoming stop. Exercise caution on bridges or overpasses. Bridges and overpasses will freeze before ground pavement. Slow way down prior to arriving at a bridge and keep constant speed all the way across. Leave room for maintenance vehicles and always have an escape route. Leave at least 200 feet between you and a maintenance vehicle. Don't travel alongside of a plow. Signal your intentions early to make yourself visible. Avoid sudden stops and quick direction changes. Keep your low beam headlights on at all times. Remember to turn headlights on when you're using windshield wipers. This is a required regulation. Keep a safe distance. Leave plenty of room between your vehicle and the vehicle in front of your truck and beside your truck when possible 8 to 10 seconds of stopping time. Stay off cruise control and jake brakes. Using the jake brake is dangerous and will result in too much deceleration causing a skid. Remember, scan the horizon. Don't travel as part of a pack. Traffic seems to move in packs on the highway. Find a safe way to get away from the pack and travel alone, with the goal being to maximize the distance around your vehicle. Identify your escape route. Don't follow the tail lights of the vehicle ahead. When the snow is so heavy, visibility is low. Seeing the tail lights of the vehicle ahead means following too closely. Always scan the horizon. If the leader makes an error, you will too. Trucks may leave the road and you may follow. Don't be a hero. When the road conditions are so severe, you need to recognize that it's very dangerous to be on the road. The hours of service rules, dispatchers, etc., and extra pressures that can create a difficult, dangerous position don't feel that you're letting anybody down by not meeting a scheduled appointment. As our old safety director Don Lacey used to say, there is never a load so hot that it won't cool off in a ditch. Ice on your windshield potentially means ice on the road. Also, ice on the mirrors and hood are a good indication that road conditions are getting dangerous. Use your resources to watch weather along your route, such as TV, radio, internet, and weather apps. Remember that water freezes at 32 degrees. Look for spray coming up from other vehicles. If spray is coming off tires, the roads are wet. If there's no spray, there's a good chance that there may be ice on the road. Watch for warning signs. If vehicles are spun out in the medium or the shoulder of the roads are bad, it's time to get off the road. Keep your windshields and mirror clean and clear from ice and snow. Utilize a snow brush to remove any excess snow or ice from your vehicle hood. Use your defroster to keep your windows clear of fog. Keep a stock of spray de-icer and bags of salt for traction. Be extra cautious when walking on or through snow and ice. Always wear appropriate attire including footwear with good traction for the weather conditions. Always use a solid three-point contact stance when entering and exiting vehicle cabs. Be aware of chain advisory. From September 1st through May 31st, chains must be carried on the truck regardless of the route. Let's talk about the anti-lock braking system. ABS is designed to prevent your wheels from locking up when braking. Make sure you understand that a constant pressure from your foot is required. ABS systems have been a proven enhancement to stopping a vehicle in poor conditions. When the ABS engages, you'll hear a rumble from the brakes and the brake pedal will vibrate under your foot. The ABS computer is controlling which wheel is braking in order to prevent a skid. 
Remember to resist the temptation to take your foot off the brake while the ABS is engaged, maintaining constant pedal pressure. Driving safe during the winter needs to be a top priority. It's important to understand what makes a vehicle slide on slick pavement. Wheels that are not rolling are sliding. Wheels that are sliding are often referred to as locked up. Any locked up wheel steers the trailer. As a result, any locked up wheel will think it needs to go first. It will try to lead the others. With a tractor or trailer, if the trailer wheels lock up, the trailer will attempt to come around to the tractor. On the other hand, if tractor wheels lock up, they will attempt to come around and this is called tractor jackknife. A skid is the birth or beginning origin of a jackknife. If allowed to proceed, the skid can turn into a jackknife. If you catch it in time, you may avoid having a jackknife. It's said that by the time a tractor and a trailer are at a 15 degree angle from one another, the chances of regaining control are slim to none. The picture of the truck is quite a bit sharper than 15 degrees. Let's analyze some of the causes of skidding. Overbraking, hitting the brakes too hard for the conditions will definitely cause a skid. Brakes that are out of adjustment can cause skids. Overturning the wheel too sharply for road conditions will also cause a skid. Next, we need to look at the types of skids. Front wheel skid originates while braking, oftentimes making the front wheels lock up. Causes of this includes brakes out of adjustment, poor brakes on other axles, and road conditions with less traction under the front wheels. During this front wheel skid, no matter how much you steer, the vehicle will continue to travel straight. To stop a front wheel skid, the brakes must be released. After the front wheels begin to rotate and traction is regained, steering control can be regained. Next is the rear wheel skid. Rear wheel skids may be a result of poor brake adjustment. Rear wheels on slippery surface or abrupt change in drive wheel speed caused by poor downshifting. Another type of skid is the trailer wheel skid. This happens when the rear of the trailer skids sideways. It's difficult to feel by the driver. The cause is brake imbalance and or use of the hand valve. To recover, you must always allow the trailer wheels to regain traction on the pavement and remove power steer and counter steer when necessary. Don't engage your tractor brakes. Once your trailer loses traction, it will move faster than your tractor. The power skid is a spinning wheel which is similar to a sliding wheel in that it has less traction and tends to want to lead, similar to a rear wheel skid. The best approach is to get rid of the power. Press in on the clutch and stay off the brakes. Spin outs can and do happen. They occur when rounding curves too fast or when you encounter a patch of ice or loose gravel. In each instance, it's a result of driving too fast for conditions. A safe speed is a slow speed. In safe driving, you need to always be aware of what the speed limit is. Your speed should be 25 miles an hour to make this curve, correct? The answer is no. The speed limit is for cars on drive pavement. Reduce your speed to at least half of the posted speed limit in conditions where traction is in jeopardy. Hydroplaning is a very dangerous result of hazardous driving conditions. It occurs when roads are wet. The tire's tread tries to channel the water by either pushing it ahead of the tire or out of the sides. At slow speeds, this is possible, but at higher speeds, the treads may not be able to displace the water fast enough. A film of water forms between the tire and the road surface. As speeds increase, total hydroplaning will occur, resulting in a total loss of steering and brake control. There are many factors affecting tire traction causing hydroplaning. Things like tire pressure, tire tread depth, and depth of water on the road are all factors that can cause hydroplaning. In summary, preparation is the key to safely navigating your truck during the winter season. Before leaving on your trip, be sure to prepare your vehicle, yourself, prepare for emergencies, and prepare for other drivers on the road. Be diligent to become and maintain being a safe driver. Slow down and leave extra space between your vehicle and others. Signal your intentions early and understand visibility is limited in inclement weather. Be extra cautious when driving on bridges and overpasses, blowing and drifting snow, and especially black ice. 
Remember, be safe out there. The life you save may be your own.